Today, the House voted to send articles of impeachment against President Trump to the Senate as damning new evidence emerges against Trump's henchmen. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. It's official. We will now have the third Senate impeachment trial of a president in American history. And knowing that this historic moment was coming, Trump decided to soothe his ego last night by holding another one of his group therapy sessions in Wisconsin, where he surrounded himself with his cult of fawning admirers and tried to fill the stage with as many underwhelming white guys as possible. I guess to make himself look good by comparison, I mean, look at this. This looks like the audition room for a Cialis commercial. It's like the curtain call for a regional theater production of 12 Angry White Men. <laughs> but as always, it wasn't enough for Trump to surround himself with admirers. He also had to admire himself by talking about himself in the third person. We've produced everything we said and more and more. Before it was talk, I said, I'm going to do this. We're going to take care of your trade. What we've done with China now on Wednesday we signed, that's tomorrow. What we've done with the USMCA. What well, we've done with Japan, $40 billion trade deal, that a lot of it has to do with the farmers. South Korea. Oh, uh, you gotta love Trump. You gotta love Trump. No, we don't. <laughs> Trump is so detached from reality, he's starting to talk like a sitcom character doing his catchphrase. Uh-oh, looks like the kitchen's on fire and the cops are here. Still, you gotta love Trump. <laughs> And by the way, sitcom Trump is not a stretch. If you don't believe me, here's the president of the United States going full king of queens and complaining once again about water pressure. But sinks, toilets, and showers, you don't get any water. Are you getting oxygen to your brain? I don't want to be critical, but is it possible you're not paying the White House water bill? Final notice. And then today, Trump continued his attempt to counter-program House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's historic impeachment announcement with his own announcement on the first phase of a trade deal with China. But it seemed like Trump never got to the actual announcement because he spent the entire press conference just calling out the names of supporters who were in the room. Bob Lighthouse is really an outstanding guy. Thank you very much, Steve. Great job. Jared Kushner, where is Jared? And Ivanka, nice to have you here. Thank you, honey. Larry, you've been fantastic. Peter Navarro, Chris Liddell, Wilbur Ross, Sonny Perdue, Elaine Chow, the great Kevin McCarthy, the great Lou Dobbs, Henry Kissinger, a friend of mine, Steve Schwarzman, Nelson Peltz is here, Hank Greenberg is here. Hank, Steve Daines, Joni Ernst, Deb Fisher, Lindsey Graham, he's become a great friend of mine, Chuck Gresson, Jerry Moran, Rob Portman, Pat Roberts, Mike Brown, and Dan Sullivan, Vern Buchanan, Mike Conaway, Christy, thank you for being here. I didn't know you were going to be here. Mike Kelly, Drew Fergus, Darren LaHood, Michael McCall, Patrick McHenry, Devin Nunes, Adrian Smith, David Abney, Darius Adamchek, AJ Benga, MasterCard, Josh Bolton. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2020. Oh. Oh, the places you'll go. Jail. And then in an even more desperate attempt to counter-program the impeachment talk, Trump made a random announcement out of nowhere about the 4th of July that had nothing to do with trade or China or really anything at all. We're going to do a big fireworks display, right? Mount Rushmore. We're going over. I think I'm going to try and be there on July 4th. They haven't been there for like for 20 years. I said, why? Uh, environmental reasons. I said, you mean you can't have fireworks because of the environment? Yeah, environmental reasons. I said, what can burn? It's stone. You know, it's stone. Well, you idiot. It's in the Black Hills of South Dakota. <laughs> it's surrounded by trees. There's a forest, like, right across the street. Because he used to be a New Yorker, Trump thinks everything is in Times Square. What can burn at stone? You just take the subway up to Mount Rushmore, and then <laughs> when you're done, you go next door to the M&M store. <laughs> it's stone. It's fine. But Trump's attempt to distract from impeachment news did not work, because as this was all happening, the House was also releasing bombshell new documents involving Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, and two of Rudy's indicted associates, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman. Remember these guys? The 
Mario and Luigi of entry-level mobsters. They're the Soviet Turner and Hooch, except they're both Hooch. They look like off-brand Russian Cabbage Patch dolls. What patch? It's just, it's just Cabbage Doll. Now, let's remember that it's well established these guys were working for Trump. There are multiple photos of them with Trump and Rudy. They had at least 10 separate interactions with Trump. They told associates they'd been given a special assignment by the president, like some sort of James Bond mission. And one of Trump's former lawyers, one of Trump's former lawyers even wrote a letter to Congress stating that Parnas and Fruman assisted Giuliani in connection with his representation of President Trump. That's right, these guys, who look like the guys who spray your bowling shoes when you turn them in, <laughs> were supposedly representing Trump. I guess it's all part of Trump's strategy to surround himself with lawyers who look guiltier than he does. If you saw all four of these guys in a police lineup <laughs> and the cops asked you to point out the suspect, you'd need all four fingers. It was him. <laughs> So it's well established these guys work directly for Trump in his scheme to get Ukraine to interfere in the 2020 election by digging up dirt on Joe Biden. In fact, in one of those documents the House released last night, there was a letter written by Rudy to the new Ukrainian president in May of 2019 in which Rudy requested a private meeting to discuss what we now know was their scheme to cheat in the 2020 election. Rudy said explicitly in that letter that he was working for Trump while simultaneously trying to claim he wasn't working for the president and insisting that all of this was very normal. Here's the first paragraph of Rudy's letter. Dear President Alex Zelensky, I am private counsel to President Donald J. Trump. Just to be precise, I represent him as a private citizen, not as President of the United States. This is quite common under American law because the duties and privileges of a president and a private citizen are not the same. Separate representation is usual process. Wow, when you have to start your letter by explaining that what you're doing is not suspicious, that is definitely suspicious. <laughs> Like when you text a weed dealer for the first time and say, I am writing to obtain marijuana for medical purposes and not because my parents are out of town. But in many ways, in many ways, that letter was one of the least shocking things the House released last night. There were also additional notes and text messages related to the scheme to get Ukrainian President Zelensky to investigate Joe Biden. For example, there are handwritten notes from Parnas on stationery from the Ritz-Carlton in Vienna, where Parnas literally says, and these are completely real, get Zelensky to announce that the Biden case will be investigated and do my magic and cut a deal. What magic was this guy gonna do <laughs> other than make a meatball sandwich disappear? <laughs> and then there were the text messages, which were ominous, chilling, and bizarre. For example, they also introduced a completely new character into this whole saga, a Trump supporter from Connecticut named Robert Hyde, who owns a landscaping business and ran for Congress. Hyde was apparently working with Parnas on this whole scheme in Ukraine. And yes, before you ask, there are also multiple photos of Hyde posing with Trump. How is it possible that Trump has taken photos with every meathead goon in the tri-state area? <laughs> Trump's like a mall Santa for wannabe goodfellas. <laughs> These guys all look like they're starring in a kid's show called SpongeBob SquareHead. Parnas and Hyde apparently had an ongoing exchange of text messages in which they appeared to be stalking and spying on the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich. You might remember that Ivanovich was a key impeachment witness who was the target of smears by Trump and his inner circle because she was a career Foreign Service official who they saw as an obstacle to their criminal scheme. In fact, at various points, she was told Rudy and his goons had plans for her and that there were concerns for her security. And now we have these text messages in which it appears Hyde and Parnas we're closely tracking her movements and planning something very ominous. We are starting to see the contents of the cell phone and files of one Lev Parnas. And it is giving us a window into a rather astounding operation supervised by Rudy Giuliani in the name of the president. Text messages suggesting that former U.S. Ambassador Marie Ivanovich may have been under physical surveillance. Robert Hyde, a Trump supporter and congressional candidate, claimed to have contact with a private security team monitoring the ambassador's moves and communications. He's talking about Marie Yovanovitch, the ambassador. He says she's under heavy protection. She's talked to three people. Her phone is off. Her computer is off. They'll let me know when she's on the move. Then later that day, they're willing to help if you, we, would like a price. Holy this idiot literally wrote in a text message that his guys were willing to help if you would like a price. These guys 
are a lot dumber than the criminals on TV. Those criminals are always using burner phones and switching cars, meeting in back alleys. In real life, these guys were texting each other and putting up posters on telephone poles that said, looking for thugs to do crimes. <laughs> this is for Trump as citizen, not as president. He is my friend. Here is a picture of us. <laughs> so all, every bit of this damning new evidence is coming out as the Senate prepares to hold only the third impeachment trial of a president in history, and whatever happens, that will be a historic stain on Trump's presidency that will follow his name forever, which is a point House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hit home multiple times in her press conference today. On December 18th, the House of Representatives impeached the President of the United States, an impeachment that will last forever. And yes, it is a fact. When someone is impeached, they are always impeached. It cannot be erased. Oh, she definitely knew Trump was watching. <laughs> she might as well have looked directly into the camera and said, Donald, this will follow you forever, 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 forever. So the House voted today to send the two articles that passed last year to the Senate for a trial, and Pelosi also appointed impeachment managers who are basically just prosecutors to make the case against Trump during the trial. Pelosi said she focused specifically on choosing experienced lawyers when she made her selections. Today, I'm very proud to present the managers who will bring the case, which we have great confidence in, in terms of impeaching the president and his removal. Chair Adam Schiff of California, our lead manager, Chairman Jerry Nadler, chair of the House Judiciary Committee, Chair Zoe Lofgren, Chair Hakeem Jeffries, Congresswoman Val Denning, Demings, Congressman Jason Crow, Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia. The emphasis is on litigators. The emphasis is on comfort level in the courtroom. That's right. Democrats are actually appointing experienced litigators, whereas Trump's team is just a bunch of heavies he picked up off a street corner in Bayonne. <laughs> you know, the guys Trump bought at Goons Are Us. They even... <laughs> All dressed the same. I mean, look at this. These guys look like they shop at a store called Abercrombie and Snitches Get Stitches. <laughs> so Trump's now preparing to face the third set impeachment trial in history as more damning evidence emerges about the criminals he surrounded himself with to carry out his illegal scheme to cheat in the 2020 election. Trump will be on trial for multiple crimes as his presidency goes down multiple toilets. <laughs> this has been a closer look. <laughs>